Yo, what is good, NYU? You are listening to the Silence Behind the Vials podcast, episode number nine. Kai, what do we got? We have Buddy Cohen and Lucas Oshetsky from NYU Men's Volleyball. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, sure. Yeah, awesome. Um, buddy, we, uh, we look at hometowns often. And uh, Newport Beach, California, Lucas, Middle Village. Shout out Queens. I don't know if you know this. I'm born and raised in Queens. Shout out to the world's borough. Um, buddy, talk about like what Newport Beach is like and contrast it to New York City. Newport Beach is the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I was explaining it actually in class. So like, my teacher was like, so you're from Newport Beach. What do you do? And I was like, well, I play volleyball. I surf. I go to the beach. I play beach volleyball. It's kind of, it's just like it's not even that much of a beach town, mm. but it kind of just gets that rep, and it kind of is that though. I mean, this past summer I worked at a fruit stand. <laughs> <laughs> like, it oh. just I I worked on Bubble Island on a fruit stand, and I sold five dollar chocolate strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of just wealthy beach golf mm. surf, and then obviously you come here and it's like. You walk into the subway and there's just a <laughs> screaming at you. It's, just, it's like, oh wow, like I'm here. Yo, yeah, we actually were talking about Zach Bladder, one of our graphic designers, like right before we turned the cameras on. Um, <laughs> we need an edit of you <laughs> at a fruit stand. Twenty five cents. I have a photo. I have a photo of the fruit stand. I oh, we need, yeah, we need that. We need that. We need that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, Lucas, I mean, so first of all. Like, obviously, life in Queens, like, it's not that far off from that of the city, right? Maybe more residential, not as, you know, hustly and stuff. But, like, for your question in particular, I want to talk about, like, the high school application process. Because I don't know if you, to the extent to which you would agree or not, but, like, for local New Yorkers or native New Yorkers, the high school application process is deadass like, like the college application process. Like, what was that like for you? Because you ended up at Hunter College High School. Yeah. So my application process was a lot different. I'm kind of lucky I didn't have to go through that whole thing. In Hunter, you go in at seventh grade. So in sixth grade, we took a test. It was just Hunter specific. Um, luckily, I got in, so I didn't have to take any of the was it SHSAT, Correct. any of those tests. But my younger brother is going through that process now, and it seems like a headache. But uh, after I got in, we start at seventh grade. So it's not like a typical high school, 9 through 12. It's 7th, 8th, and then 9 through 12. So kind of prepare you 7th, 8th grade. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was lucky to make it there. Um, yeah, I think it was a great school. I had a good six years there. Where, where did you go? I, oh, man, I went to a small school in, uh, in Astoria in Queens. It's... Um, is the baccalaureate school for global education. Yeah, 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 no. Shout okay. out to the international shout baccalaureate out, out. program. <laughs> uh, it's super traumatic because of how <laughs> academically rigorous it was. I mean, that's very common, though, like 7 through 12 schools, like those grades. Because, like, my elementary school was, like, K through 8. My middle school was K through 12. And, yeah, my high school was 7 through 12 as well. So, like, and then it's mad funny because in New York, like, we're all on top of each other. So you'll have, like, three schools in one building. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. So <laughs> it's funny how it works out. <laughs> Um, but so of course, yeah, Hunter College High School, buddy in high school in California. At what point throughout your high school or club careers did you know you could compete in college? Was there a moment um, where you were like, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm good." Honestly, for me, I got good late. Like I, I was a different position until the end of my like I was a oh, setter wow. until the no middle way. of my <laughs> sophomore year, and I was the fifth string setter on my JV team, and my coach was like. <laughs> Oh, you're tall. You should come play middle. And I was like, <laughs> right. all right. Like, I mean, if it'll, it'll, if it'll have me start, sure. And, like, I began – he was like, you play basketball, just take a layup. And I would just run a back one off one foot. That's mm. all I would do. I didn't know how to hit. I'd never hit a ball before because I was only a setter. <laughs> didn't love volleyball, to be honest. Like, mm. I played it to begin because my mom forced me to and all my friends mm. were. But – and then I slowly – I moved up to the ones team my 17s year, and even then I like I my team was the best team in the nation, but I was an empty jersey essentially. There, Got you. <laughs> I remember there's a time in the quarterfinals of this tournament. It was I think 12, 12 in the third set. In in club you only play three sets, mm. and so I was in, and I literally went to my setter and I go, no matter what happens don't set me like I, <laughs> I don't want it I don't want to swing here yeah but then I 
worked at it because I mean I'd only been in that position for less than a year. Mm-hmm. Then my 18s year, um, I started off on the bench on my club team. Came in in this tournament, we were down, and I I actually started balling for once. I was getting Word. kills and stuff, and like th- that was a time when I was like, yeah, like I can do this. And I was playing with all my friends, mm. and that's when the game is really fun. And then from there, it just took off. Awesome, late bloomer. Cool. Yeah, How about you, Lucas. Similar to Buddy, I didn't really think I was gonna play volleyball at another level until like I didn't start playing on a team as, until ninth grade. Oh wow. Just because in New York City the scene's not as big as in California, so over there they they could start like as early as like twelves, thirteens, fourteens. In the city, the scene's not really that big. Not a lot of people play volleyball, so we started sixteens. My sixteens year, I started playing club, and I was lucky to have uh, my freshman year in high school. I had the uh, NJIT women's coach as my coach. So okay. It's a D one program. Mm-hmm. So he helped me out. He kind of got me into volleyball a little bit more. My dad got me in at an early age, just like peppering with me in the backyard hitting around so it kind of grew my love for the sport but um i also had the pleasure of working with the uh, our old assistant coach Carl Fr- Carl mm. Franz yeah for sure so he coached one of my club teams and that's where i kind of started to realize that i could maybe mm. play in college you know he was kind of pushing me towards NYU um yeah yeah speaking of that i mean the college men's volleyball landscape is a lot different than a lot of collegiate sports. Um, It hasn't been an NCAA sport for nearly as long as as most NCAA sports. So given that, it's kind of a more of a limited pool, I guess, of schools, and I wonder what the recruiting process is like, but what what drew you to NYU in in the end? Well, for me, I, I, my, the director of my club, he, he knows almost every coach in the country, and he asked me, what do I want for my college? And I was like, academics comes first, mm. probably volleyball next, and then just like location. And mm. he was like, email NYU, like that's perfect. And I want to work in sports, NYU is a great sports mm. program. And I, was, I honestly, I had never visited New York before I committed here. I was just oh, wow. like, yep. I was like, Mom, um, I emailed NYU, they responded, um, I think it's looking good. And I <laughs> applied and got it. Hey, that works. What about uh, you, Luke? For me, honestly, I never wanted to stay in New York. Like my whole last years of high school, I was like, I'm getting out of here. I want to go to California. Big beach guy, beach volleyball, <laughs> sunlight. Um, but academic opportunity is a huge one for me. And the tough thing about volleyball, D1, is that a lot of the... D1, most of D1 schools that are that have high academics are also really good at volleyball. So these guys are like all over 6'6", just like jumping out of the gym. Mm. So it's tough for me to get into like the UCLA's, places like yeah. that, to, to play volleyball still and be in a good school. So I got into Stern, uh, which is a great academic program for business. So I decided I'll stick it out for another four years mm-hmm. in the city. And then we'll see, see what happens after college. Maybe I'll move out somewhere. Glad you did, or are you still itching to leave New York? I'm glad. I mean, it's nice. I have, you know, we have a really fun team, mm. good group of guys I've been hanging out with. And to be honest, it's a whole different experience in high school. In high school, I was in the Upper East Side. Uh, we were all kind of young. We didn't really travel much around the city. We stayed in school, mm. played sports after school, went home. So now we're in the Lower East Side. It's like a whole different scene, yeah. like places I've never been to. Yeah, having fun, not regretting it. Glad to hear, for sure. <laughs> um, <coughs> now that you guys both of you have you know this is your second season playing um, what was your welcome to college moment if you had one a moment whether early season practice of course a big senior group last year so I'm sure a lot of those guys were were tough in practice but there a moment where you're like whoa this is this is a different level uh, for me it was actually our first open gym um so Tyler Flood, who graduated, he was senior yeah. last year. He went to my high school. Oh, and okay. so, I mean, I, I'm kind of, his sister's in my grade. I know them. I've mm. known of him. Um, and, like, I talked to him before about, like, what he, his experience is. So I knew him, didn't know anyone else. I think it was the first ball. We, were, we just started scrimmaging. First ball I get set, and he blocks me straight down. <laughs> and he just screamed, and he goes, Welcome to college. You know? There it is. That's <laughs> the first one. You and I was just, just like, that. all right, like, it's real. I'm here. Yeah. Like, let's do this. Yeah, that's mad funny. Get that tatted. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> 
Uh, I don't. I can't really think of much. To be honest, I think Buddy had a good story. <laughs> Trying to think, nothing really comes out. I think maybe Carthage, our first game last year, it was mm. also our first game this year. Really strong team. I, I think we play them every year. It's the first team we play. They're like, they've won the last two years championship. Yeah. So I think that was when I saw them come out and start bouncing balls in the warm ups. I was like, this, this is mm-hmm. intense. For sure, for sure. Um, on the flip side of it, outside of volleyball in New York City. You know, Lucas, your, your answer to this might be different, but like you said, you're in a new area. But, buddy, um, curious what you have to say about a welcome to New York City moment, crazy thing on the subway, you know, whatever it may be. This is this actually is funny. This was this was I was playing with Lucas and our other teammate Zach. We were playing at an open gym. It was uptown, like crazy uptown. What was it like? Uh, high, like Upper West Side, like far, like 120th, 120th, something like. Mm. I think it was my first week. Zach and I are, we're both from California. We don't know how to use the subway. We're like, we barely make it there. And like, it was far. It might have been like 45 minutes. And we get out of this open gym and it is pouring. Like it was, it was that day of last year when it was like the crazy rain. September yeah. 1st. Yeah. And I remember yeah. this because my crib got flooded. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was up to like, <laughs> water, was like his shoulders day. in water. And yeah, you too? My PC was underwater. <laughs> no way. My, my room is in the basement, so yeah. I was screwed. That, I think Irma. I think that was a hurricane. Mm-hmm. So, so, I don't, been, yeah. Something like that. We get out of the open gym and like. We just start sprinting to the subway. It's puddles up to our knees. Mm-hmm. Lucas is in like someone's truck, and the car is pretty much floating. <laughs> and we just run to the subway. We're literally drenched. Like I have a video. It's like there's like waterfalls like coming down from the subway. Yeah, yeah. And like I'm in there, just literally, it looked like I jumped out of the pool. <laughs> and so we get on the train, and we're like, oh, this is fine. And his phone's dead. My phone was at a low percentage. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. And. We get to about maybe 80th Street, and they're like, yeah, the trains are stopped because of the rain. We're not going to keep running. And I look, and we're, and we're like, what do we do? Like, yeah. I, I don't know what to do. So we sat there because they were like, it might go on, it might not. We're going to wait. We, I think we waited like 20, 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. At this point, my phone's at like less than 5%. And then mm-hmm. they're like, all right, the trains aren't working. And like, I go on Uber, call the like, Two hundred dollar Uber, something insane yeah. like that. Because I literally, we had no other way. It was yeah. like we couldn't city bike. It was nothing. Call the Uber. We're waiting outside. My phone's at one percent. It dies before the Uber gets there. All we know is it's this like SUV or something. <laughs> and we just see this like we're freaking out. His phone's dead. My phone's dead. We're in New York. It's our first week, and we find this no dude way. like across the street. I don't know how. Like it was. Yeah. By God's grace, we found him. <laughs> and it dropped us off, though, at Brittany. And, I mean, after we got dropped off, I, I walk in shivering. But yeah. Zach lived at Lipton. I live at Brittany. And I see him the next day, and he's like, dude, I got lost, and I was literally walking home for an hour. I couldn't find <laughs> him. Because <laughs> that was when, like, we had no clue where yeah. to go from anything. And he was like, it was one of the worst experiences of my entire life. <laughs> The surge pricing has to have been a trillion dollars. I mean, come on. <laughs> what do you mean? Manhattan's different too because you have a grid, so you could kind of yeah. find. But if you were in Queens, forget no it. Yeah. yeah, forget you'd be on it. Twenty third Street, but you don't know if you're on Ave Road Place Island or yeah. what. <laughs> it's messed exactly. up. <laughs> so I mean, Lucas, probably yeah, probably difficult for you. But I mean, is there one in which you can remember either, if not maybe not so much a welcome to New York City moment as a native, but like maybe a wild subway story that you might have? It's honestly too many subway stories. <laughs> I've honestly gotten used to all the crazy stuff that goes on there. I remember once, you probably have this. I feel like there's a skill that people who ride the subway every day to work or school develop where you could fall asleep and wake up at your stop <laughs> or right before. <laughs> what? Yeah, it works. Crazy. I swear. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how, but yeah, it works. Walk or train. Yeah. Traffic. So after high school, I would do it all the time. I would fall asleep on the hard train, like 20 stops. Somehow I would wake up yeah, a stop it's, before a stop. It's an unbelievable body clock. But when I go to school now, I'm on the I'm on the first stop of the M train. And I remember one time I fell asleep. It was it was a rough night. Maybe went to sleep at like 3 a.m. And I was exhausted. <laughs> I went to sleep. Rough. And I, right, right. I woke right. up and I was at the same stop that I started at. So, <laughs> so it I had gone all the way there <laughs> and all the way back. And I was right back at the first stop. That's and right. I was like, this did not just happen. Yeah, what that body clock crazy. is good. that what body clock is crazy. What about the classic Lucas flip before Baruch? Oh yeah, we're doing a little post game subway ride back to the city 
And I was trying to be one of those uh, MTA uh, performers, trying to do a little flip showtime. between the showtime, exactly. <laughs> and I fell straight on my head <laughs> in front of the whole That's train. So <laughs> if you come in with one of those neck collars, and you got to explain this to coach, <laughs> how do you think that goes over? Yeah, I was performing on the train for a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, so you tell the truth? I ruined the train was tying <laughs> They're probably better entertainment than they normally are. <laughs> oh, yeah, for real. Seriously. Speaking of coach, though, Jose Pina, first off, a legend, a legend in not only men's volleyball but here mm-hmm. at NYU. Uh, he's been he's been coaching here longer than any of us have been alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's it like to play with him? What was it like to be recruited by him? I mean, he, he's a unique guy. Uh, what has that experience been like? Well, he's a character. I mean, I was gonna say something. my first like time I met him, I remember it was on Zoom. And so when you get recruited, you normally get recruited by the assistant coach. So all of my Zooms, like to begin with, were with Carl, who was our uh, assistant before. Mm-hmm. And then Jose would hop on occasionally and talk. And my first time, he hops on, I think he was just, he was like outside or something. Like just on the Zoom though. And like, I, I remember my mom was like, you always have to have like questions ready for the coaches. Yes. Like. I think I had three questions. I said one question, <laughs> and I just didn't get to speak for the next hour. <laughs> the next yeah. hour, it was like, yeah. mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it was literally just like, so like, how's COVID affecting the season? And there was no season, and he still mm-hmm. talked about it for mm-hmm. about an hour. For sure. And Sounds like, like a staff meeting for I us. I was like, wow, <laughs> yeah. like, this guy can really like just keep going. Yep. And I mean, as a coach, you know, he does – take some of our practice time with his talks that can go on for mm-hmm. anywhere between five minutes to an hour. Mm-hmm. You never know, but you know, he, he's been there, he's been here a long time for a reason. Yes. And yes. even though if we're not always the prettiest, he knows how to get wins as you can look from his record. Yep. And I, he knows what he's doing. And I think at this point he does a good job of knowing that we're old enough to like, take care of ourselves and like when we mess up we know it it's yeah. and like he doesn't want us to make an error and, and go look at him and be like what's wrong like he wants us to be like a team and to honestly like kind of coach ourselves in a way and just be more independent from him and just have him help us out and guide us to where we should be yeah. but it's on us it's not on him like he knows he can only do so much in a game Mm. I can definitely see that knowing him. Um, Lucas, any similarities? Uh, I think that was a great answer from Buddy. Um, I think he's just a lovable guy, honestly. I see him always yeah. talking with the parents after the games. You know, every, I, I don't know a single person that doesn't like him. Um, having him at practice, even when it's most of the time we're trying to take it serious, obviously we're having fun, we're joking around sometimes. And um, it's nice to have that. And he's also really invested in our time off the court also, making sure mm-hmm. that we're set academically, set with internships, things like that. So I think he's playing a really big part in all of our lives. Um, and like Buddy said, I didn't really get recruited by him either. I talked a lot to the assistant coach. But um, after getting here, he's been uh, – it's been fun. It's been fun playing under him. Mm. I think, honestly, it's just like at the end of the day – I know that he has my back and like even if it doesn't seem like it in the moment he has all of our best interests in mind and even though if it's like it might not be a volleyball best interest like he wants he's setting us up for life and wants us to be like strong independent men that (laughs) are like he wants us to be successful and I mean for like he set up so many of our players with internships jobs like he just does a lot of things that you might not really notice when you're in it but Mm. like looking like back on it you're like wow like that dude really helped me out and like he really cares about me for sure for sure that's super dope was there any like was there a special component at all to the fact that he is an alumnus of the institution like whether like whether that be any insight that he was able to give rather than just a coach that you know didn't go here as an undergrad himself or did that factor in at all for you guys If not, it's all good. Yeah, I was just curious. I don't think so. I mean, like, I think it's 
it helps that he's like well respected around here and yeah. like like I mean I've heard like if Jose really wants something it'll get done so I mean I don't really know how that goes on behind the scenes but I just I think he just it's nice that he's like he's been here for a while and he knows how things should go and just kind of how everything runs every year gotcha. mm. um on the court for for both of you obviously you play different positions but um what's more fun what's more satisfying just stuffing someone at the net a huge block or absolutely like burying a kill on somebody <coughs> for me i would have to say block just because i don't get as many yeah but he gets a lot mm -hmm. um, for me <laughs> You know, kills probably come more often just because as an outside, I get right. fed more balls. But um, it's hard to say because when you bounce the ball off the floor, it's a great feeling mm. and everyone's going crazy. Yeah. But uh, with block, you have the aspect that you shut the other guy down right. too. Like kill is just all you. With the block, you just get to stare him down, you know, get get a yellow yeah. card if you have to. <laughs> if you have to. <laughs> the refs the refs in Royal are soft. Like if you give him a stare down through the net, but there's got to be like no. <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> exactly, it's clipped. Dude, there's been like three times this year where I have to hold this kid back. <laughs> hey, we're already on like three yellow cards this season. It's not great. Jose, hey, Jose, 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 Jose has one of those. That's hilarious. Jose, Jose saw Lucas was about to explode, and then he just started talking a ton of shit to the ref to take the red card. So hey, he's, he's got your back, bro. That's the guy your back. Exactly. That's well, hey, last night they got one. You guys didn't, so. That's that was, true. That was, that's true. That was rough calls from the ref. That was a bad call. Their side, yeah. yeah. But. Yeah, well, th what he said was, he, I mean, he's like, how much are you paying him? Like, once you bring that up, <laughs> it's guaranteed. That? That's what he yeah, said yeah, that yeah. got him the card, yeah. Home court advantage, I, mean, I guess. Every time. <laughs> I think there were bad calls on both sides, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I've said some worse stuff about the ref, but not directly to them. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> under my breath to Buddy. Definitely. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> about you, Buddy? Big block or big, big kill? <sighs> I mean, I think it's got to be the block. Just, like, a kill... Yeah, everyone bounces a ball. Like, mm. it's kind of cool. You'll bounce a ball. It'll be dope in the moment. But then, like, it's. I think it's the aspect of that. If you get a kill, I'm going to go celebrate with my team. But mm. if I go get that block, like, that opportunity to talk it to the other person. <laughs> yes. Or, like, or just, like, the, like, as Lucas said, the stare across the net. Like, mm. yeah, like, that's what's up. Mm. Or, like, I, it's just the extra satisfaction there is just better, I think. Like... A kill's a kill. People get kills, but like when you get blocked, it's just especially knowing how the other guy feels. Yeah. When you get blocked, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. So like it's just, it, I it has to be the block. Mm. Mm. Not surprised for sure. Uh, speaking of chirps though, and shit talking, you guys are are good at it. We'll say that. Uh, <laughs> a special, special shout out to Kyle Rasmussen. Shout out um, Kyle. You know, especially, you know, it's his game. Birthday too, actually. Yeah, happy birthday, Kyle. Um, <laughs> especially even when he's not dressed, he finds a way to impact the game. Oh, yeah. Um, but just talk about the church. So, is that like in men's volleyball in general? Is it always going on like that from bench to bench? Or are you guys just a different breed when it comes to chirps? It, there's some teams that like love to chirp. I mean, it's kind of a thing. Everyone does chirp in men's volleyball. I mean, it's more, I think it's more the benches. Like, right. normally the guys on the court, like, unless we, like, actually hate them, like, the, normally the guys on the court are cool and they're, like, nice guys. Mm. But, like, it's the benches. Like, the stuff, like, when Kyle, well, last night, we're up 24 19 <laughs> and we're serving and he's like, he's like, come on, guys, like, come on, side out here and we got it. Like, He's just, like, just making fun of them. Like, they're obviously not going to come back. Right. Like, it's, like, it's you because you know it's exactly what they're saying. Like, come on, guys, one pass, then we just go back and serve, and then we'll just put four in, we'll get a block, and we'll yep. keep going. Like, yep. It's not going to happen. Or, I mean, he I don't even know how he thinks of some of this you stuff. My he favorite is. from him is soon he just looks at their bench like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> no, Kyle is, Kyle is a huge part of the team. Even if he's on the court, he's actually – I usually don't hear most of the stuff right. that comes from the fans or the bench when I'm on the court. But Kyle, I hear a lot of stuff he says. <laughs> and I'm not, like, a big talk. I don't talk much on the court. I, like, just play. Mm -hmm. And yeah. after, like, plays, I'll, like, stare at them or whatever. I'll say subtle things like, oh, like, mismatch over here, mismatch. The mm -hmm. guy's short. is blocking right. me. Right. Or, like, serve number eight. He sucks. Stuff like that. 
But uh, I think with our bench, they could take it a little too personal at times. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll just be roasting the kids. Like, no filter. <laughs> just like lunchroom table vibes. Right. Just no. roasting. And I feel bad, honestly, because I feel like the kids parents are probably sitting in the bench and we're like roasting his hairline from the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel bad, honestly. But uh, it helps us out. I mean, it brings a lot of energy for mm -hmm. everyone, I think. I think it makes, puts the other players kind of in their head a bit more, yeah. a bit more nervous. So, yeah. I mean, I think the bench is definitely, has such a bigger impact on a game than anyone outside of it realizes. Mm -hmm. Like, because I mean, for me, I, I'm off half the time and like, Honestly, being on the bench is it's lit. Like it is so <laughs> yeah. fun. Like just being there yeah. and like you hear Kyle, like they'll hit a ball out and he'll be like, White lines. Like <laughs> he's like, hit it in the court. <laughs> or like and I think yesterday, like when our chirps, like sometimes they get personal and then that's when Jose always steps in mm -hmm. because Kyle Kyle I think has gotten many red card or many yellow cards from mm -hmm. the bench. Mm -hmm. And like um Yesterday, Jose, we were like, this one guy was serving and he had a man bun and our, our whole bench was like, nice hair. Like, <laughs> and Jose was like, all right, that's it. No talking for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, only and 10 minutes. Everyone was like, <laughs> what? I just like, said, I, I, I don't want to hear you for 10 minutes. <laughs> he was like, yeah. Everyone was like, what? <laughs> Then it will help you get a job at like J.B. Morgan. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't love the chirps, though. <laughs> But it's, it's part of the game, for sure. It, it's, it's part of the game. So does Kyle do his research, then? Or is he not a research guy? It's I all just what, he just, see, what you I see is what you get. He's just on the spot. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Just, just comes up with it off the dome, I think. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Well, then on that same topic, then, um, there's, like, the, the chirping from the bench. There's also the bench celebrations, right? Are, are, there, uh, are there any that, that kind of stick out to you over the last couple of years? So, like, yo, like that one was actually especially ridiculous. Um... <clears throat> I feel like we're not the biggest celebrating team. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of just like people get excited, people clap. But, I mean, I think some of the celebrations in volleyball are just so extra. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, hence. when you see someone get a block and, like, someone from the back of the bench is just, like, diving, or like, all over the court. <laughs> right. And you're like, what's going right. on? I think it's just a little much. I mean, like, the bench always is hype, and mm -hmm. it's really nice to have that. But, I mean... I don't think there's any celebrations from the bench that exactly stick out mm. to me. I think it might not be a bad idea to look into. You know, maybe yeah. think of mm. some good Kyle bench celebrations. It would kind of have like that if something big happens, everyone's just like, yeah, yeah. starts like running toward the court, kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I think my favorite celebration on court that kind of translate off court is like Gotham after he does. <laughs> I don't know, kill or a block, and he hits the little shrug. <laughs> yeah, MJ <laughs> shrug. And everyone on the bench. I, gotta, I love that. But that fits his on. personality, too. Yeah. yeah, but that is the worst celebration. If, because the second he gets blocked, the entire other team's yeah. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Every single time. Every single time. It does get used back on him a lot. Yeah. Speaking of him, I love just, like, uh, the chant, though, his serving chant. Oh, a lot it's of fun. so fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. We're still thinking of, of ways to, or chance for the other guys. Some of them mm. are a little bit harder with mm. the names. Some of them don't like it either. Huh? Yeah. Some of them don't That's like right. it. I mean, I like when I was serving this year, it was, like people were do, like, it's kind of a normal like volleyball one where you kind of just like start slow and then you just clap as mm. like the yeah. toss is coming. And I was back there and like, I was kind of going through my routine and the claps were getting really fast and I was like wait I kind of got to toss this now <laughs> and then I like tossed it and I just completely messed it up because I like mm. went fast because of the tosses yeah. or in our first game against Carthage Rye was serving and we used to do it for our middle last year like we would just clap for him mm. and like I, I hadn't been back there before when he was serving the first time and I guess the first time they did the clap and he got like really mad like he came off mm. the court and he's like stop that like you made me miss <laughs> and i go back there and i'm the only one doing it and he looks at me after the serve and his face was like i'm actually gonna kill you he comes <laughs> off he's like he's like you made me miss that serve like what the hell are you doing it's definitely not why he missed that <laughs> <laughs> check the numbers it's yeah. definitely not <laughs> but he was so mad at me for mm. doing that and i was like i was just trying to hype you up right man. Like, <laughs> that's funny um <clears throat> Speaking of, you know, alumni players last year, right? Um, 
it seems like the men's volleyball alumni base is a like huge b in new york city they stick around um and they're always engaged they're always at the games you guys have a great alumni event before the season every year um so what's it like engaging with them when you at the alumni game and get to talk to those guys um and and kind of how has that impacted your experience with the team um for the most recent alumni like the freshman of the alumni from last year obviously right. it's great to see them at games because we were on the same team last year like they get it they know we're at practice, right. Pina every day, talking for two hours, five days a week. Um, just all the other alumni, honestly, it's really cool to see just like where they ended up. Like they're all really helpful and supportive in their season. Like they all want us to win a chip. Um, yeah, it's nice that honestly that they all a lot of them stay in the city to find jobs and mm-hmm. have found jobs here. Um, hopefully, we get the new gym soon, so they don't have to keep traveling down to Brooklyn. Right, <laughs> but. Yeah, I appreciate the sport a lot. It's nice that they they come out. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just, like, you meet them, and, like, they're all so friendly, and, like, they know exactly what we've been through. They they yeah. did it before us, and the fact that they just – they support us, they come to the games, they get rowdy, they yep. love it. Yep. Like, I just think the way – I mean, they just want us to succeed, really, like, in life and in volleyball. I mean, I heard when – James told me when they beat Springfield for the first time, maybe what, five years it was, I think it was before the COVID season, all the alumni were like going crazy, like Instagram yeah. DMing them like, yo, bro, like good job. And I mean, yeah. it's just like a community here that mm. immediately you're a part of when you're on the team and like they just want to help you. I mean, Brendan Duggan, who was an alumni, I think a couple years ago, I mean, I worked for him as an internship in mm. my first semester of college. And That's like, awesome. Yeah. They just want us to succeed, and it's cool that it's even people that I don't know, and they're so, like, friendly, and they want us to just be the best of ourselves. It's also cool to see that they're all still involved, even at, like, older ages. <laughs> like, I can imagine just, like, me being, like, 38 with, like, a wife and kids and, like, coming back to see this kid, <laughs> the rest of the sophomores, <laughs> just, like, for a hangout season. <laughs> Like we all just hang out, go to the games, like get dinner, beer after, you know. Mm-hmm. It's going to be sick. No, it's awesome. Right. For sure. <laughs> um, but a lot of people, you know, men's volleyball, collegiate men's volleyball, I guess, in general, um, I see online a lot of – it's mostly coaches who call it the NCAA's best kept secret. I mean, I mentioned before how uh, the landscape is smaller, obviously. It's kind of come into the NCAA uh, more recently than a lot of other sports. Do you guys feel that as players, like that, oh, it's not, there's not as much, you know, attention or fanfare, or are you just kind of, like, in it, and that's not really something that, that you think about? I think for me, I kind of struggled with that more. Not really struggled. I mean, I didn't really mind it. I was always kind of, like, just in my zone playing. I was having fun. But like I said, in the city, the scene is, like, really, really small. So, like, if you compared my high school games to Buddy's high school games, like, you would be watching two different, like, sports even. Yeah. yeah. Like, my high school scene, there was, like, kids in school who kind of just, like, picked it up. Like, yeah. in gym, volleyball, they play. They're like, oh, this is fun. Mm-hmm. Let me start playing. Thing to do. So, yeah. there was no really level. Um, and outside of that, like, the, just in general, like, gyms, there's not many gyms to play in the right. city. Um, but in the, at the college level, I'm surprised that there's not more, like, viewership. Honestly, I think that even, like, mainly D1, like, those mm. high-level games are, like, really interesting. Yeah. Like, even my mom, who doesn't play, she watches them, and she, she really enjoys them just, mm-hmm. just to watch. I think, like, all the big digs, blocks, hits are really exciting. And I think if people started to show I think the Long Beach coach was, ta- was saying that they got people to come out. And after they came to the first game, they're like, wow, I didn't know this was this fun. Like, right. should start coming right. out. Yeah. Um, one more thing I just want to touch on. I'm surprised that beach volleyball, I love beach volleyball. Mm. I play in the off season all the time. I think it's a great, it helps us out as indoor players too. And the men's professional scene is really big. Right. But uh, in college, it's bigger than the women's professional scene. But in college, they don't have any, any yeah. men's volleyball teams. So I don't know. I don't know what it comes down to. I don't know like where the issue lies, but I think it's just interesting that there's I think just for this sport specifically. Really. I think they're trying to start uh, beach volleyball for men's in college. I think there's a couple teams now, but I mean, it's obviously nothing big. But I mean, for me, I'm the exact opposite of him. Where at my high school, it was I remember being 
an eighth grader mm-hmm. watching the my high school it was like they won the national championship they literally won everything mm. I, I almost every one of them went d1 some playing pro now it was you had to get there during the jv game to get a seat word yeah and that gym is so hot because of the amount of people in there and the crowds mm. are chirping some of the most heinous stuff <laughs> yeah, like it was so bad yeah. Like if there was one guy who in Newport too, I can imagine. Yeah, it was. There was one guy who missed a serve to win it or to lose the game in like one of the CIF, which is just the playoffs of California. And for the next like two years, it was all he would say was just like one job. When anytime he'd do anything or like <laughs> people would like, it was bad. The chirps mm-hmm. were bad, but it was packed. But I mean, here, yeah, I mean it. It's hard. Because there's not that many – people don't even really know we have men's volleyball here. Yeah, there's a lot much of – Much less athletics. But yeah. there, there's <laughs> a lot of people that they're like, oh, you're an athlete. Like, what do you play? And I'm like, men's volleyball. They're like, oh, like, men play volleyball? That's a thing? I didn't know that. And, I mean, I think it's one of the most, like, fun games there is. It's mm. – I, I don't think I've met someone who's went to a game and actually like been open to see one and disliked it right or didn't yeah, have fun for sure it's just, for sure like even if you don't understand the game even if you don't play the game like just the vibes of a men's level game if there is fans there like we i mean last night we got some of our friends to come because it's the first time we've actually been able to have fans and well for the fact we're that we are playing now because i mean right. last year we didn't <clears throat> but um <laughs> it's like it was fun and none, yeah. i think None of them had been to a game before, and they were like, I kind of get volleyball. Like, I don't really know the rules, but, like, that was really fun. Yeah. Like, just the energy, just everything about it, like, just to see you guys, and it's fun. And I think men's volleyball, it is it is spreading a lot. I mean, mm-hmm. I know I have a really good friend at Long Beach, and so there, as Lucas said, they're getting a lot of um, – at all their practices and everything, they have film crews and everything like that. Mm. So they're required to post Instagram reels, Mm. um, TikToks. And my friend, has his account, I think he was at like 2,000 followers before Long Beach. He's at, I think, 40,000 right now. He's reaching about 5 million people every month Mm. on Instagram reels. And I think it is growing. It's just more of a niche sport that people don't really give it a chance because it's like, oh, Mm. it's volleyball. It's a a girl's sport. Like, that's kind of just how it's looked at until you go see a game and you're like wow like the athleticism here is just amazing and yeah the energy in the actual building when it's a good game and it's two competitive teams is unmatched mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i can even, i mean like you said last night you i could see you know i could tell where the pocket of you know you guys friends yeah. and supporters were, and it's not like there was a ton of them that, no. but there was enough where they got loud when you guys got loud and that i could tell that was fueling you guys and it was just a really fun atmosphere last night for sure um, but to your point, like, so I grew up in Rhode Island, uh, like an hour south of Boston. Yeah. High school did not have men's volleyball. And just out of being naive to it, what you said, I didn't know boys played volleyball when exactly. I was growing up until I came to New York for college, started working in sports and then men's volleyball. And I was like, oh, shit, this is this is cool. Like, yeah. it's a lot of fun. Um, and I think like what my question was getting at, you both answered so well. And like it is growing, but in niche areas in california it's huge but then where i grew up it's like non-existent so i think um the efforts are being made to spread it around more and it's it's only going to take off once it it really catches so yeah i mean for sure i think as well like in cal like it's so much bigger in california than mm-hmm. anywhere else that for the high school if you win so if you win cif and state if you win both you're just crowned the national champion because the level there is just higher than any other state yeah. like and it's not like even close yeah it makes sense so like you literally just get the national championship if mm. you win both in california <laughs> <laughs> love it <laughs> um travel stories whether that be let's say somebody that you pranked or something on a road trip or even just something that occur- uh, that occurred um for you guys as a team um do you have any fun travel stories for us I mean, I think I have one going. I I think it's weird because you think if you're traveling as a team and you're an athlete in college, you'd probably be eating well. But <laughs> when we travel, it is the worst I eat all year. <laughs> like in Chicago, we get back at 
11 from our game, and Jose's like, all right, you're on your own for food. <laughs> and we end up ordering McDonald's. We get the pile of 13 cookies. We get fries. We get everything. The next day in our game, we're all slow and sluggish, and we're like, what's going on? And we're like, it's because of that. Or, I mean, even I remember last year, our senior who graduated, Owen, he was he, – he ordered in food, and I walk into his room, and he's sitting there eating noodles – with two pens as chopsticks no because he didn't have chopsticks. Yeah. And that was, one of, that was one of the funniest things I've ever walked into. And he was so casual about it. Like, it's like come on. it was kind of smart. Just, just yeah, like two, it was two bics. Just literally <laughs> two pens, just eating. And like, because he didn't have a fork, he didn't have anything. Yeah. And it was kind of innovative, but like, I, it was so funny. You kind of got to go hands, though. <laughs> you got to go hands. Ooh. I don't know, pens. guys. Two I, pens I, is I crazy. Know. I can wash my hands and then just eat noodles. That's true. You can. <laughs> two pens. Okay, Come on, man. I don't know where staples. Hope the caps were on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's class. That's facts. Apparently. <laughs> no, yeah. This last show was bad. I mean, we were in the middle of nowhere, like Kenosha. What was it? Wisconsin. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like after 9 p.m., there's nothing open. Like, right. We were eating like buffalo wings, like Big Macs. Like, there was nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Um, travel stories. I don't know. I mean, we honestly don't travel that much. Yeah. Um, I remember losing a lot of money, honestly, just because we have a traditional uh, big poker, poker game. Oh. Ah. <laughs> we have an away <laughs> tournament, so uh, I've had my fair share of uh, <laughs> Brian coming back on the bus. You know, getting the Venmo request from my boy <laughs> for like $200. That's tough. Right? Checking my bank account to see if I have enough in there. <laughs> Ryan oh. Lee brings this massive poker case to yeah. all of our trips, and it, I think, I think he's more excited to play poker with the team than the to play volleyball. <laughs> oh, I, I promise you, like, I he's setting it up in the chat, guys. Be ready, me, bring the chips. It's, he, as he calls it, it's Casino Lee. Casino Lee. <laughs> and one I thought day, I saw that in one of the comments. Waiting before, um, I think it was. Oh, it was actually before we played Carthage, our first yeah, game yeah. of the year. I'm taking a nap before the game, and I wake up to, like, eight calls from Ryan Lee because Jack Candido wanted to play me heads up in poker. And he calls. I finally wake up. I'm like, yo, like, what's up? Like, I'm I'm napping. Like, what's going on? And he's like, bro, like, why are you dodging JC, bro? Like, (laughs) we're trying to run it. And we're like, and I was like, dude, like, we have a game in, like, two hours. Like, no. And he's like, bro, like, come on. <laughs> Put the chips down. It's Priorities, funny. let's go. Yeah, there's a way tournaments are pretty DJ. Oh. DJ now. To go back, <laughs> actually, though, to our chirps, I think mm. our best chirp that we have, win or lose, or if we're just in some really, like, just middle of nowhere area, we were playing at Carthage, and they were, like, chirping us, and Gowdy just screams, you live in Kenosha. <laughs> and the entire <laughs> crowd is silent. The entire crowd like goes pay, silent. You pay to live I love that. Emotion. Like I our, our, I think our best chirp is just like, "You live here, <laughs> and we're going back to New York. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. enjoy. Like, yeah. Well, that's my chirp. Anytime people want to berate me about what I pay for rent, and I'm like, "You live where you live. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> don't, like, don't talk to me, <laughs> ugly. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta remind them. <laughs> exactly. Like we lose to just a random team. It's like, sure, you beat us, but we're going back to New York. We're going to New York City. That's an L for them." All the way. Uh, that kind of leads right into, in a way, team culture, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, co- confidence, we'll say. Um, and you guys are a super close group. It's evident just, just being around you a little bit. How does that come about year in and year out? And, and just what really brings you guys together and makes the team culture as good as it is? Um, I think in general, our class, like even last year, looking at the older class, and the seniors had a pretty big class. There were like five people. But, like, a lot of them weren't really, like, super close. Mm. Like, a lot of them didn't hang out, like, outside of school. Like, they had their own friend groups. Like, a few of them did. But our class, I think it just ended up that, like, we got a bunch of people that are, like, similar-minded mm-hmm. and, like, have the same kind of hobbies, personalities. Like, we ended up hanging out a lot. Like, our class, specifically sophomore class, I feel like we're really close. Even though we're really big, like, we have seven people. Yeah. And I think we're all really close. I mean, we have classes together. We hang out after school. Yeah. Um, I think that brings the chemistry just up so much when we're on the court. Mm-hmm. Just having yeah, for sure. Like last last night when uh, Sachin came on. Yeah. And it was, like, pretty much basically all sophomores. Sophomores mm-hmm. and Gowdy. Pretty much, yeah. Leader. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was just, like, 
he Sanche came on the court and we're like, yo, this is it. We made this. What we've been waiting for yeah. like, last year. We were like, this is going to be it. It's just fun to be out there with your teammates. Um, I think in general this year, our chemistry is kind of a bit more solid. Just like mm -hmm. with the freshman group that came in, they're really chill kids. I like them. Um, get along with everyone. Like, they're not too... I think we were a bit too loud as freshmen. <laughs> sure. We all kind of wanted sure. to, like, make our spot. Like, yeah. everyone wanted to start. Like, we would kind of chirp the older guys in practice. This year, it's kind of, kind of a bit more chill, and I think everyone's... Yeah. working together a bit more mm. I mean I think it's tough in a place like New York because yeah. so many people have so much going on and I mean I've heard from the alumni like they were saying that's always been one of the faults of NYU men's volleyball that it's hard to get people together because people have so much stuff going on mm -hmm. and it's not like we're in Wisconsin there's nothing to do and we're going to hang out with the team every single night but I think this year we focused a lot on just the culture and about how in all sports, but especially volleyball, like chemistry and being an actual team goes so far. And like, whether that's just hanging out as a team, just doing a team activity, going to, we, what, we went to a women's soccer game in the morning on a Saturday all the way up in the Bronx. Yeah. And like, that sucked to be honest. Like just waking <laughs> up at like 9 a.m. for that game, it was yeah. like, that wasn't great. The game was fun. I yes. I'd never, I'd never been to women's soccer. The, right. It was cool, but like I think it's just getting everyone to hang out and like doing te things as a team has really helped us this year, especially because mm -hmm. like we're young. I mean, we have almost all sophomores playing. Me, Lucas, Rye, mm -hmm. Luke, Zach. Yeah. That's five yeah. out of the seven that are sophomores. Yeah. And like we, it's just being a team. Has been a big thing, and as Lucas said, like it's it's really fun to play with just like some of your best friends and yeah. just the guys that you like, like that atmosphere on the court. I remember yesterday, like Luke got some crazy block. Mm -hmm. We're all just like huddled, and like we're right next to the um, just the fans, and you we could like you can feel them. Like yeah. in the game, you don't really want to interact with the fan as yeah. much because mm -hmm. I mean the coaches don't really like it. And yeah. it just kind of yeah. takes away from the focus and the focus of the team but like we all felt it like it was it was amazing and just mm. playing with like the guys i love it's just amazing you know it's fun hell yeah Thanks. hell yeah um and then you know lastly like you said you guys got a lot of time don't know how much you're thinking about this yet definitely want to stay in the moment and enjoy this right now um but but post-graduation have you started to think about kind of aspirations plans of course you know getting a, a really good degree and having the connections um, here are great. So is your mind going there yet? Career plans, graduation, post-grad plans or not? I mean, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. I mean, I'm kind of, I know I want to work in sports mm. and like sports is my, has been my passion my entire life. And I'm not sure exactly what side of the sports I want to work on because I came in thinking I wanted to, be an agent like that was kind of like yeah. I saw Jerry Maguire and I was like oh like this is yeah. this is it <laughs> but I mean I'm not sure if that's exactly what I want to do but I know hopefully I'll be working in sports whether that is in the entertainment side or like the managing side I'm not exactly sure what that's going to be but my main end goal will be hopefully working in the sports world Sure. Same. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in yeah. New York, what it's a perfect place to do it. So right, yeah. You mentioned about like sport being your passion, not really sure, knowing or being sure of like what side of it you want to mm -hmm. be on. Neither do I. Right. Yeah, I Same with Kai. Mm -hmm. but, like here we are. You yeah. know, we're having a good you time. So. <laughs> to this point, so. a tough industry to yeah. break. Yeah, yeah, for sure it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still also kind of in the process of figuring out what I want to do. We still have a bit of time. Um, I'm in the finance kind of direction right now in Stern, but I also, I'm also interested in real estate, so I might do like an in internship this summer with like, um, I was thinking it's like private equity firm that kind of deals with construction and real estate. Mm. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'm still kind of like taking classes here and there to figure out yeah. where my interests lie. But yeah, I think it's good that we have a bit of time to figure it out still. For sure. One thing you mentioned just before this prompt, buddy, was about like how you could like feel the energy of the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Like we've we've of course, I mean, I know you guys have been to a couple, but like some of the men's and women's basketball games in that same exact venue at, at in Brooklyn, 
And I remember it was like during the halftime of a game that I was at. I think it was a women's game where, you know, I was conversing with a bunch of students and I was like, yo, like finally, like year one, because it's funny, like just before we cut, turn the cameras on, um, buddy was like, yo, like, is this your first year doing it? And I was like, in many ways, it feels like it, because right. even though this is a second academic year, first year was just like a blur. Like it was mm-hmm. a COVID ish year. Like we were in the third North basement. Yeah. We didn't get to get no face yeah, on with office. y'all. Yeah, straight up. Like yep. we didn't. <clears throat> we didn't hang out in third north basement <laughs> we worked there <laughs> 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 yeah, cubicles. for context yeah um but yeah like in many ways this does feel like the first time which we're like getting an actual like year under our belts mm. and like i remember that during the half time where i got to like converse with mad different teams track team women's soccer women's volleyball like just a bunch of different things i was like yo like this finally actually feels like a community i'm a part of and not just the one that i'm like working with yes you know what i mean so like that's why obviously you guys are excited for the new building among many many other reasons but like that's one of the things that I'm most excited about, like the yeah. community part of it. And I actually just posted about that on like LinkedIn yesterday. <laughs> just felt like a LinkedIn <laughs> moment. You know what I'm saying? But like, yo, know, like that I can only imagine how you guys uh, feel about not only the new building, but like what your what's what hasn't even begun to scratch the surface in already like a really good start to you guys' college careers. You know? Yeah, I mean I think the community is great here. And I mean we're pretty close with the women's team, which is cool. Um, mm. I knew a couple of them, like, briefly before here, but, I mean, I've gotten really close with them. We would go to a lot of their games. They come right. to our games. Right. And, like, I just think the, I mean, athletics, I think athletics is just, like, on the come up here. Like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think I this yeah. year, looking at just everything that, like, compared to before, and I think it's a lot to do because of you guys. Like, you guys have really stepped it up this year. And, like, people are actually noticing athletics because of, like, the cool Instagram posts you guys are getting out. Or the edits that, like, I men's, men's basketball, their edits are dope. Like, I think all, everything behind the scenes this year has been amazing. And, like, I mean, thank you guys. Like, it's really okay. helped us. And, I mean, I think we... What, like, someone, I don't know who made the edit, but there was the edit of Sachin on (laughs) D'Angelo Russell. With the ice in his face. That That was so, so, like, we get out of the game. Iconic. And we, the thing is, we've made that exact edit before. No way. But not the exact edit. I think it was was JC who made it. Okay. But it was nowhere near as well edited. (laughs) But we were like, wait, JC, did you send them this? And he's like, no, like, I didn't do this. (laughs) That's fire, And it was so funny. Like, we're a big, we we have a lot of edits We're a big edit culture. Team. This is the funniest. Okay, so then that's what, so then the post that you guys have been getting, it's been fitting right into that's the like group yeah, chat. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's in the group chat, bro. <laughs> no, like, we, like, we, I mean, Dude, that's we, we post some like we, like we, JC, we call him the dark horse this year because <laughs> it's, it was just, it's a long story, but like Jose will literally be like dark, like he subbed him in a game and he was like dark, dark, come here, <laughs> and like we're but we're a big edit team. I mean, Angus, one of our freshmen. He came late to J-Turn because he got his wisdom teeth out, and he's a, he's a Tish guy. So his edits are actually pretty good mm-hmm. compared to some of the other ones that were right. just bad. <laughs> but I was like, all right, you owe us one edit per wisdom team. <laughs> and, you know, he's been, he's been coming through. Nice. <laughs> well, we were just talking about this, uh, this one the other day from the Hunter game. Oh, oh my God. God. L. Yeah, that was. I'm surprised they posted that on the main page. Yeah, they being me. <laughs> Him. <laughs> Wait, it is what it is. It's still up there. Oh yeah, yeah. come on, bro. <laughs> that was Just laid out there. Did yeah. they get down? They uh, well, you know, we'll say the opposition it ruffled some feathers. <laughs> some, the some conversations behind the scenes. That's all right. <laughs> we do it for the culture. Yeah. <laughs> for the culture, exactly. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to touch on was um, look. So something you said about. Oh, or rather, it's not something you said, but I was actually just curious before we wrap. Um, as a native New Yorker, because now that I've been working here, this is now like my second academic year. I don't really remember what my perception of NYU was as a native New Yorker prior to actually getting here, because I feel like I've kind of forgotten about it. it. The same could be said for you. But like, can you remember like, like how New Yorkers really perceive NYU? Because... It Honestly, definitely isn't I mean, sense. outside of my high school, I think everyone perceived that as just like top, it's mad good school. top, top yeah. school in New York. Mm, right. But like, I didn't really have that because my high school, it was kind of just viewed as like a safety school. 
because my high school was all like, like everyone there was just like ridiculously smart. Yeah. Um, I was like not I don't know, maybe average and like I, SAT score I had average, which was like a ridiculous average mm-hmm. for for a high school. Um, so there it was kind of viewed as a safety school. But obviously Stern, I think, was a bit higher, which kind of made me feel a little bit better about myself. Right. But like outside of high school, I think everyone has a pretty high like view of, of yeah. NYU as a school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What were you guys for like being not like, you know, non-New Yorkers? Like what's the perception of what was your understanding of NYU? I mean, I like, I honestly knew nothing about yeah. NYU. Like, I mean, I had never come to New York. I, w- I didn't really know. I just knew it was a good school mm-hmm. with, in New York. I didn't know much about New York either. Yeah. I just yeah. Madison Square Garden, like <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> right. I feel that. Um, for me, it was interesting because I wanted to come to college here, and I did. Um, so for me, NYU was like, oh, that's an elite school in New York. But I did not even have close to the grades or the SAT scores to come. So I didn't even apply. I was like, yeah, NYU seems like a great school. I'm not even going to apply. Like, no no shot, no chance. Um, so I ended up going to St. Joe's in Brooklyn. It was ideal for me it was a great experience um ended up getting me this job the work i did there um but yeah it was like for me nyu since i wanted to come here was like this thing like that i couldn't reach and i was like i I accepted that i was okay with that but i was like yeah that's cool but i'm gonna do my thing and and now i you know work here so it's kind of full circle but i feel like there's a lot of people that are like nyu is like my dream school oh yeah like when when i first came here people would be like Why'd you Why'd you come here? And I'd be like, I don't know. They had good good academics, good sports. The vibes were right. Yeah. It was New York, <laughs> right. and then they're like, "What? Like yeah. I've been like diehard to get here my entire life." Like <laughs> no, seriously. If you go to like any NY University Instagram post, like the actual university's page, all the comments are like, "Please accept me." OMG, I got waitlisted. Just submitted my ED application. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, you're like, ah, "It's <laughs> cool." <laughs> 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 you feel bad, honestly. Like, yeah, no. I mean, you're good. <laughs> But no, it's just funny. I mean, it's just like such polar ends of the spectrum sometimes. Uh, Buddy, Lucas, you guys got anything for us? Thanks, guys. This is fun. Yeah, yeah it's man, a blast. We, we hope sure. that it was. Y'all just listened to Silence Behind the Violets podcast, episode number nine with men's nice. volleyball. Keep it locked to GoNYUAthletics.com at NYU Athletics across the board. You will see these two uh, continuing their really successful season. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.